Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this modern beach house. This one is pretty awesome. Let me show you it. So here it is from all of the different angles that you might possibly want to view it from. And on top of that, it does actually have quite a decent sized interior, both with a downstairs that is a large L shape and an upstairs that you can see most of now. It even has a nice outdoor area as well that leads you to this really big big three tiered pool you start off underneath the big umbrella overhang that we have and the highest level and then you slowly drip down into this mid level and you end up all the way down in this fountain slash pool area which allows you access to the ground floor again it's a pretty unique design i hope that you guys enjoy it if you do please do remember to gently tap that like button we don't want to smack it it hurts it far too much if you do enjoy building like this please do remember to hit that like button it really helps me out and please do consider subscribing and let me know what you want to see next down there in the comments without any further ado why don't I actually show you how to make this thing it's so easy as well that's the great thing about this so if you want to make it Here's what you'll need. Grab yourself some block of quartz, some quartz stairs, some quartz slabs, some birchwood planks, some birchwood stairs, some cobblestone walls, some birchwood fence, some blue stained glass paint, some white stained glass paint, and a red block, a white block, green and lime terracotta those can be wool by the way that's why i said red and white blocks now once you have each one of those materials and once you've figured out where you want to make it i'm going to be making mine on this abandoned man-made island in my survival world well this build will fit into a 21 block that's 21 blocks coming across the front by a 24 that's 24 blocks going towards the back area of land if you like you can better plan out your build by making this same rectangular shape shape on the floor in your world. Now, if you do that, you're going to want to start on the front right-hand corner of your rectangular shape, which just so happens to be this block, and we're going to stick a quartz block on top of it, followed by a cobblestone wall on top of that, with a fence on top of that. Then place on top of that a block of quartz, and go behind that block of quartz with a row of seven upside-down birchwood stairs. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Place a block of quartz behind that stair, then place a birchwood fence underneath that, and then a cobblestone wall under that, and connect that down to the ground with a block of quartz. What we now want to do is we want to, on top of this block of quartz, we want to place two block of quartz, so that's one and two. And then we want to return back to the block of quartz that has like the fence underneath it and the stairs connected to it. And we want to go right of it by seven with the upside down birch stairs. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Place a block of quartz, connect that quartz down to the ground. Also go up on top of that quartz by two, one, two. And what you can actually do is you can place a birch wood fence on top of that and also the one from before, so you can actually have something which looks like this. Taking the same quartz block that is connected to the birchwood stairs, we want to place yet another row of five upside down stairs coming back from it. That's one, two, three, four, five. Place a quartz block behind that, connect that block to the ground, and also place a quartz block on top of the block that you connected down to the ground, so like this. We're now taking a backwards view of what we've just made, and we want to take the block that is touching the birchwood stairs, and we want to come across the back of the build, this time by five, with the upside down five birchwood stairs. That's one, two, three, four, five. Place a block of quartz, connect it down to the ground, and chuck one on top. Take the same block that is once again touching the stairs and go right of it by six with the upside down stairs. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Place a block of quartz, connect it down to the ground and place a block on top of it. And as a matter of fact, this one's a little bit different because you can actually place an additional block on top of it. And you can even go as far as placing a birchwood plank on top. Take the birchwood plank, place a plank to the right. Do an upright diagonal with the plank, go right one, do an upright diagonal with the plank, and go right one, to give you a shape which should look like this. We then want to take the 
quartz block that is touching the upside down birchwood stair and we want to go right of it by five with the bir upside down birchwood stairs that's one two three four uh, four and five then place a block of quartz connect it down to the ground but also connect it upwards you should find that it will connect nicely to the birch wood plank and i do believe that we can place one on top although we might have to alter that later Taking a sideways view to what we've just made, we want to take that block of quartz that we have right there, the one that is of course once again touching the stairs, and we want to extend it forwards towards the front of the build by five using the upside down birchwood stairs. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Place a block of quartz, connect it down to the ground, and what you might also want to do is you might want to go up on top of the block of quartz and just to make sure that we've got the right row because this is important we're going to do a row of six coming upwards that's one two three four five six. Oh, that's perfect and then you can actually just connect that to the left as well if you like now once again taking the block of quartz that touches the birchwood stair we want to go right and we want to place a row of seven upside down stair one two three four five six seven place a block of quartz connect that down to the ground then extend that block of quartz upwards and once again connect it to the back of the house a unique thing that we can do with this particular side of the house is you can place a row of birch wood planks underneath the top row of block of quartz very much like this That'll make sense later. Coming to the front of the house now, we're now on the front of the house, which is lovely. We're going to take the first block from the top. Actually, it might be easier to do it like this. Take the block of quartz that is touching the upside down birchwood stairs and go right of them by five with the upside down birchwood stairs. That's one, two, three, four, five. We're coming across the front of the build now. Place a block of quartz. Connect it down to the ground like this. And what we're also going to do is we're going to create a doorway in the center of this empty space. So uh, it's actually easiest if what we do is we place a row of glass on the left of this space and the right of this space. And we just place a row of quartz inside of the glass and connect it together at the top to form a nice simple doorway. Yeah, that looks perfect to me. We now want to take the block of quartz that is touching the stairs once again, and we want to do a couple of things. First, we want to extend it upwards by two. One, two. Place a virtual plank on top. Extend that to the left. Do an up left diagonal. Left one. Up left diagonal. Left one. To give you this sort of shape, which is absolutely perfect. But we do also want to take the block of quartz that is touching the stair, and we want to place two upside down birchwood stairs going right. So that's one, two. Then we want to place two regular quartz stairs going right. One, two. Then two more upside down. One, two. Then a block of quartz. Take that block of quartz and extend that quartz forwards. Actually, you want to do a couple of things once again. Uh, on top of the block of quartz, you want to place two block of quartz. One, two. Underneath it, you want to place a birchwood fence, a cobblestone wall, followed by a birch, uh, followed by a block of quartz. Then you want to take the initial block of quartz and you want to extend it forwards by seven upside down birchwood stairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Place a block of quartz. Then underneath it, birchwood fence, cobblestone wall, block of quartz, just like that. Connect the front of this together using upside down birchwood stairs, just like that. That's absolutely wonderful. And then what we're going to do is we are going to connect the middle part of the house together. So uh, the middle part of the house is very, very simple. Um, not all of this area underneath here is house uh, some of it is like a sort of like a little underground sort of garden um, a lot of this isn't actually house so if we take the best way to describe it is you see this quartz block to the right of the upper side of the entrance connected together with the two upside down birchwood stairs well if we take this quartz block and we extend it backwards and over to the right hand side of the house where we have this quartz block which has the two block of quartz on top of it with the birchwood fence on top of that 
that actually forms the house area. That is where the actual house is. And all we're going to do is we are going to connect this corner quartz block downwards, like this, and that will form the actual inside of the house. We can now feel free, if we like, to just completely fill this side of the house. If we fill this in with glass, it helps better show um, what's what the rest of the build is, if that makes sense. Like, it helps um, figure out the boundaries of the build a little bit. So if you just fill the, these inside walls in with glass, we won't make any errors for what actually is inside the house and what isn't inside the house, like that. That's, uh, that's perfect. So now you can see the rest of this is pretty much just outside. Uh, as a matter of fact, kind of like show you what's inside and outside once again. Like if you take the corner block that we connected down to the ground and filled in with glass and you extend this backwards towards the back of the house. And if you were to take the birch wood plank blocks and connect them from the front to the back then you can kind of see here that this is where we're going to have the second story of the house and everywhere else is outside so to better show that if we just place a layer of blue stained glass pane um, in between the rows of birch wood plank and the quartz then you can kind of see once again what's inside and what's outside um, the Next part of this is going to be for us to fill in the center of it's to fill this L shape in using block of quartz. So every single block that is sat inside of the like the second story of the house. So like this particular patch in the back left hand corner, this has to be filled in with block of quartz like here. And we also want to have from here to here filled in as well. So on the left hand side we also want this to be filled in with block of quartz. This is once again we're just figuring out what is what on the house. We're figuring out what's inside, what's outside, what's going to be a pool, what isn't. So we want to have something which should look a little bit like that and that's absolutely perfect you guys can see how this is shaping together now if you like you could even draw different lines with the pool like the you could place a row of birchwood planks here just to kind of like show where the pool's going to be and uh you could even no no that's actually pretty pretty much perfect there's no no reason oh i mean we could we could also place a row of um, virtual plank here that kind of shows you where the uh, pool is going to be as a matter of fact where these two birchwood planks connect together this corner block here is actually going to be two blocks of quartz coming up from the ground just to kind of show you the boundaries of the pool and what we're also going to do is we're going to kind of like cut the pool in half here we're going to place a row of upside down birchwood stairs kind of like literally cutting the pool in in half like where we have the pillars of block of quartz we want to cut that in half so you can see i guess it's kind of like a complicated little thing that we've made but really all we've done is we've just filled in a couple of areas just to kind of show you what's going to be going where so let me show you this next bit so this next bit we're going to fill in the upper half of the pool so the pool that's closest to the house we're going to fill the bottom of it in using quartz slab or quartz block it really doesn't matter it can be quartz slab or quartz block actually you know what we'll do is um we'll actually fill the under part of it in using quartz slab so we'll have an ever so slightly deeper pool so you know what we'll fill both parts of this in like this we'll fill just underneath all of the empty space for the two parts of the pool we want to completely fill it in using quartz slab and then that'll create kind of like a cool sort of thing we'll be able to see it like underneath and it'll create a bit of a contrast and we'll also get just a little bit of a deeper pool which is kind of cool so um we'll actually have that that looks pretty good we're probably going to run into problems if we don't connect the quartz slab together aren't we so i suppose we'll do that as well and we're also going to on top of the row of upside down birch wood stairs that kind of like divides the pools we want to place on top of this, another row of upside down birchwood stairs, but the middle block is going to be knocked out. 
We want to place on top of this a layer of white stained glass paint on the left and right hand side. And we also want to place a layer of white glass that goes all the way around the pool. So we want to place white glass going all the way around the pool. And we want to have two rows of white glass coming up as far as the quartz block pillars. So you can kind of see here how deep the pool is actually going to be at the top. And at the bottom here, there's actually no glass that goes around. But underneath here, where we have these four quartz blocks, quartz block pillars with like the stone and stuff on top of them, we're actually going to dig in the ground. And we're going to connect all of these together with a row of block of quartz. We're going to connect them together in like a nice rectangular shape, as you guys can see me doing here. We're going to connect all of this together like this. Just going to connect all of that, just like that. That's perfect. And then we're actually going to place glass going all the way around this. And we're just going to leave on the left-hand side, on top of the quartz, we're just going to leave a pathway open. We're going to leave... Uh, actually, what will we do? Will we leave... Hmm... We'll leave the three center blocks open, is what we'll do. We'll leave those three center blocks open. That'll, uh, that'll look just fine. And what we're also going to do is we're going to dig out this center bit. And the reason that we're going to dig this out is because the pool itself, the water itself, is actually going to fall through here, and it's going to make a it's going to make a nice area just uh, just falling out underneath the pool. It's going to make a very very nice little uh, a very nice little waterfall. It's going to look great. A, an item that we're forgetting, which is a bit silly, is water buckets. And uh, I'm, I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in this pool up above here. I'm going to fill this pool up above, right? As you can see me doing here, I'm just going to fill this in. And I'm going to knock out the center block of the pool. That means that we should have water flowing through now. And I'm just going to make the water still in the base of the pool. So what you can do is you can either have like a nice, simple, boring flow of water like that. Or what I like to do is I just like to extend it outwards like this so that it creates a bit more of a dramatic effect and i'm also going to fill in the upper pool as well the pool that is a lot deeper than the other pools we're just going to fill this in um, it's fairly simple to do you just start from the bottom you guys know how to fill in water you just start from the bottom you go all the way up to the top like this and then that will flow into the next pool that's as high as the pool actually goes i mean you could make it higher actually i mean if you wanted to you could um, fill in all of these sides here and uh, it'd flow in uh, into the next pool naturally anyway. That looks quite good. And what we're going to do next is we're just going to put like the canopy on top of this, which is made out of white concrete and red concrete, or any red and white blocks. On top of the birchwood fence that you have on the right of the build, we're going to stack a red concrete on top of each, here and here. We're going to connect the red concrete together, we're going to extend it to the right with a row of white concrete, just like this. Then, from the red concrete, we're actually going to do an up left diagonal with the white concrete, coming towards the left hand side of the house. An up left diagonal with the red. We're going to go left with the white, red, white, red. And then we're going to extend every single one of those particular colours backwards, just so that we cover the pool. And this is just a nice little canopy, covers the pool. It actually adds a nice bit of colour to the build. That's a big reason for it, honestly, is that it adds a nice bit of colour to the build, because it's 100% necessary. It really is. It really does add a really nice spa splash of colour, just like that. And what we're also going to do is we are going to take these stairs that we have, these two quartz stairs. We've only placed quartz stairs here in the build. And we're just going to extend these down gradually using um, quartz block and quartz stairs. That's actually white concrete, but the effect isn't so bad. And we're just going to extend these down to the ground. I kind of like that, actually, with the white concrete mixed with the quartz stairs. That doesn't look too bad. It actually contrasts nicely. It's very subtle. I, I kind of like that. I'm going to keep it. And uh, what we're also going to do 
is we're going to add a floor into the house. The second story of the house, we're going to add a layer of block of quartz. We're going to fill this area in because this is the second floor to the house. The second floor is quite small, or at least the portion that is inside of the house. The rest of it, as you can see, is on like a balcony on the right-hand side outside of the house. It's not inside the house like that. And we're also going to fill the uh, sides of this in using... Uh, blue stained glass paint. We're gonna fill the sides of it in anywhere we can. Anywhere that is the house, like the walls of the house now, we're going to fill in with blue glass. So on the complete left hand side of the house, we're going to fill it in with blue glass. Uh, on the back of the house, going to be filled in with blue glass. And uh, to a lesser extent, on the right hand side of the house, there's a small patch of house um, that does have to be filled in with the blue glass. But that's pretty much it. There's not a massive amount here. Oh, I underestimated actually how many rows of glass I had to place on this particular side. I uh, I forgot that the uh, that the second story was actually higher than the first story. I do believe that, yep, we've got a row of glass here to add on the front. And then, as you can see, like I said, you can also do it on the back as well. So there's the front. No. Uh, e, oh, uh, uh, there we go. So that's the front sorted out. The house is building up very nicely now. On the back, I'm just going to do um, massive sweeps of the back. So I'm just going to go all the way to the left and then all the way to the right. Just fill it in like this and then we'll have the second story to do. Just going to place it underneath the stairs here. I find it easier to place glass onto something that isn't glass. I mean, I, it's just glass is so awkward. Uh, on the second story here, we're just going to fill this in. Uh, something that I noticed is we do have to put up some clear glass barriers on the second story of the house. And, uh, yeah, well, I mean, we're, we're, very, we're coming on with this house. This house won't take much longer at all. Um, on the right-hand side of the house, we just have this particular portion to fill in. And uh, we'll also have the... I guess we'll do the floor on the outside of the house, but we won't do it on the inside of the house. Uh, on the second story of the house, you'll see that we have um, the upside-down birchwood stairs. Um, we're going to place white glass on those just so that nobody falls off. It also looks nice. And on the front as well. But we're not placing it around the pool because we want the pool to stand out a little bit. You can see that uh, the house is it's really looking quite nice so far. It really is. It's not looking too bad whatsoever. And what we're going to do now is we're going to fill in the roof with material that we don't have. I'm so stupid when it comes to this stuff, guys. We need blue stained glass block. And what we're going to do is we're just going to connect the front part of the roof to the back part of the roof. And basically, we're just going to place blue glass block between the birch wood planks on the front and on the back. Just between the front and the back, we're just going to place the blue glass blocks. And this is just going to let a lot of extra light into the build. And now we'll grab our quartz slabs and we'll place a row of quartz slabs, right? On the very side of the bottom of the right hand side of the roof. So where the birch wood is, we're going to place quartz slab like that, yeah? And then we're going to extend it coming out of the front of the build by one row, or yeah, by one row. And then we're gradually going to place half a row of quartz slab coming up the side of the house, if that makes sense. So we want to actually, and, and I'm, that's why I'm doing it first rather than uh, trying to explain it. You want to take that first initial quartz slab that you place extending out of the front of the house and you want to gradually rise it all the way up to the top of the house until it pokes off the side of the house by one row in which you can then extend that particular row backwards until it overhangs the back of the house. And the same here, and then you can just gradually connect all of the quartz slabs together on the back in the same manner as you did the front. It's quite a unique roof. It looks very, very nice, and it contrasts nicely as well. It kind of flows the same way as the canopy, which is why it's so attractive looking. And that is the house, pretty much. Uh, some small details that you might want to add is you might want to add some artificial grass and some paths and some stuff like that. So, like, you might want to take the entrance of the house and you might want to um, clearly mark it out with some quartz blocks. So maybe, like, this is where you want the entrance of the house to be. You want there to be a nice big run-up. 
with birch wood planks um, in between the quartz leading into the interior which could also be made of birch. Um, we have the little staircase here which we could not only connect to the outer part of the house like where the house starts and we can fill this in with uh, birch wood planks but we could also connect it just to the left as well and we could very easily just um, I don't know we could just have a nice connecting path like that uh, underneath the house um, we're just going to connect just behind the stairs, we're going to connect the pool to the front of the house using a row of block of quartz. And then what I would do, I mean, this is up to you, of course. I'd dig all of this out and I'd make this block of quartz to very, very obviously make it so that people know that like this is like it's a deliberate part of the house it's not just a random part of the house that nobody thought about this particular part of the house that overhangs that has a nice overhang that's like just below the pool and stuff this is where like you might want to put like if you if you want to make like a barbecue or something like that or some fire pits or a seating area or perhaps even a little bit of plant life would look nice in this particular part like that's what I would reserve this bit for I think that uh, it look very nice under here and it would also show that this house isn't just like a showpiece that it was very well thought out that you have actually got like a nice plan for it and you could even add an additional entrance to the house like here if you want to you could very easily add an entrance um, here and you could even connect it like just where the pool connects like you could connect it like here and here like you could have a nice double door coming outside that like I said just like right next to the pool like allows you to walk straight into it you could even have have it look like that if you wanted to and I don't know I mean there's just a lot of things that you can do to really customize the house make it your own make it look nice I mean we've we've almost finished with the tutorial at this point because there's not that much more to show you but um something else that I would do is um everywhere that you now have land like everywhere that you now have like sand around the house like as far out as you want to go I mean you don't want to have like uh, you don't want to have this absolutely everywhere you're gonna want to set some parameters with this house you don't want this house to or maybe you do you don't you might not want this house to like expand all over your little island or whatever you've got going on but if you like put a nice border around it like made out of like quartz block maybe like a nice border and if you you fill in the sand like if you dig it out and if you fill it in with something interesting like artificial grass I love this stuff it's basically rows of green terracotta and lime terracotta mixed and matched moving backwards and if you just have a nice streak of what looks like very modern very clean very nice grass which is a lot better than regular grass in my my opinion regular grass is nice when you're trying to get the very natural effect but when you're trying to get something modern and clean and new and shiny then you don't want it but I mean something like this would look absolutely fantastic and you could have it throughout the entirety of the build you could add much more of an area around it I, I'm gonna stop here because I mean it the rest of it is really up to you you can do what you want in this build Um, that's the foundation of it that's the actual house complete hopefully you guys have enjoyed this one if you have please remember to smack that like button or gently stroke it honestly don't hit it it's not nice for the like button it's not good for it and um, if you do like the video please consider subscribing to the channel if you subscribe please do remember to click the little bell that would really help me out and comment down below what do you want to see next would you like to see more beach houses would you like to see like a modern beach mansion something in this sort of style this was really fun to design and make so i'd be happy to do something maybe even bigger than this who knows? And if you are, if you've done all of those things, or if, you, if you've done all of that, please do. If you want more, if you want to make some more stuff, if you're clamoring for it, check out the card system in the description below for all of my other playlists that will show you how to make all sorts of new stuff. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.